Or it lands or some out of nowhere this morning. We got some data mined information courtesy of Heakin that the next resurrection batch is indeed finally can't fear your own world. In this case, starting off with round number one, Hikone, Grimja, and Neliel. And we're about to find out in this video what skills exactly are they going to pick up. Of course, I'm excited for this. Can't feel characters are my favorite characters in the game. And that eventually means that can't feel on what Adam Yoro and eventually Tokinara are bound to get their resurrection sometime soon. But the question is, how long? Are we going to go in between Confi and World banners? Does this also mean Confi and World might be the end of year banner? I mean, it's a possibility. I uploaded my prediction video literally like less than 12 hours ago, and maybe now it's already outdated. Could we see a Confi and World end of month, end of year banner? Be very surprising. I'm not sure I'd be down for that. But you know what? I'd, I would never say no to a new Toki neither. But regardless of what this could mean for a new Confi and World banner, let's check out the free character resurrection, starting off with the least exciting of the three, uh, just because he's never been that good Grimjow. Now, when it comes to these resurrections, because we have been going forward in time, you know, these characters came out April of 2019. Our last limited time thousand year Blood War resurrection batch came out at the end of 2019. Now, I have no idea what to expect when it comes to these resurrectable characters. Are they going to get a certain number of skills like thousand year Blood War? They obviously should get better treatment given the fact they are can World characters, but at the same time, the last thousand year Blood War banner that we did get resurrected came out like seven months after this banner. So, so are they going to get the same number of skills as Ichibei? Or are they going to get a tad bit less given the fact they came out like 9 months before? Either way though, looking at Grimja, he himself is a strong attack damage plus 20% sword trait. The idea here is that he wants to pick up recharge or either full stamina damage. Any of those two soul traits are going to be a good soul trait. I guess for the sake of it, picking up full stamina damage is something that I want to see here. Because heart attribute doesn't have access to any full stam and strong attack damage soul traits. I know I don't use those soul traits as much anymore because of the very, very hard Gilchrist does work. You know, in the hard difficulty, since the idea was to clear as fast as possible, you would want to give the character as much damage as possible. Now, a recharge is equally as important in the very hard difficulty, so I don't use full stam and strong attack damage links anymore. Maybe I only ever use them in Epic Raids and Senkamon. So there's still a place for those soul traits, but yeah, given the fact that the hard we doesn't have access to much full stam and sad links, I'm kind of hoping he picks that up. But if he picks up recharge, that's also perfectly fine too. As so the skills themselves that we have sprint plus one sprinter fire duration devastation debilitator and also bruiser so he's gonna pick up a zaka here maybe he's gonna pick up an eighth skill so he might get havoc plus 20 percent and he also should be getting an innate ability so i think there's a good chance he picks up a zaka and also havoc and maybe 40 percent more damage to lacerated enemies if he gets those things i would say it's a pretty good resurrection not gonna make him crazy or anything but it would be a good one nonetheless all right then, so let's find out what soul trait is he going to pick up. He got damage inflicted at low stamina. Okay, and alongside that, by the way, we can see he did get a nate skill at 20% havoc, so his range is actually going to be quite good now. And then as for the skills, increased chance to flick stars. I he got the built-in recharge, and he also got 30% more damage to the last three He got three skills. I did not expect him to get free, I'm not going to lie. That's a pretty interesting resurrection. It's a good one at that too. It's a good one at that too. He got the increased chance to fix stars, which is always nice to see. And with that, because he is going to have a good chance to inflict stars, he then does 30% more damage when you inflict said stars. And while his sword trait was a damage buff, inflicting more damage at low stamina, that's two resurrection batches in a row, by the way, where we've got some low stam stuff. Maybe they're trying to make low stam a viable strategy in this game. But this new soul trait allows him to do 20% more damage at low stamina, which is always good. And to pair with that, considering that he didn't get the built-in recharge, he got it as a skill, picking up that 12% recharge. So I would say this is a pretty good resurrection. It's expected that Carnfield characters will get the better treatment here, very similar to Anniversary and Thousand Year Blood War. And I'm liking it. Could have been better. I feel like I would have preferred more Berserker damage instead of just damage to last rated enemies. But it's still good nonetheless, right? The character definitely is going to play different now. He now has more range. He has more damage from being at low stamina and to lacerated enemies. And to go alongside that, he has now that utility effect of an increased chance to fix star elements. Only to mind attribute a run, because they'll keep that in mind. But then his DPS is also getting increased too, because he now has the built-in recharge. Overall, very solid resurrection. Next up, we have Nelio. And this one, I'm kind of nervous about, because they can do a lot with this character. So for starters, 12% strong attack recharge soul trait. It's very rare for us to get normal attack damage characters with that particular soul trait. 
please give her normal attack damage. That'll be a really good sorcery for any power character in the game, especially those that have utility effects on their SA2, like Safwi Zoifon. Anything else would be a waste in my opinion. As for the skills though, she has a 40% Berserker, a 80% Bruiser, Debilitated, Devastation, Poise, and also Sprinter plus one. So in this case, she should get two new skills. Of course, the whole bit is for her to pick up Flurry plus one. And in an ideal situation, I would love for this character to get Guard Break. Now, in her case, she is a mini Aronka killer, so she doesn't need Guard Break when she wants to be used in content because Aronkas don't have mini guards, so I'm not expecting it, but that would be a really cool surprise to see that. If anything, she might also get like an increased chance fixed elements. Maybe Long Reach will be really cool in this character given the fact that she is a really good normal attack damage lunge. They could give a weakened defense, weakened attack, increased chance of fixed more damage to weakened enemies. There's a few things they can do with this character, but given how unique she is, I'm kind of hoping she gets a really good one here. So let's check it out. So first up, her innate skill is going to be Long Reach. They've done it. They've actually done it. Hold on. That's insane. As for the skill, oh, the search rate is damage to weakened enemies. Interesting. That's not bad. I kind of like the idea of that. Okay. What is she going to pick up then? Increased chance to... Okay. She got Havoc plus 20%. Oh, she didn't get Flurry. Why? Why have they done that? That is so unfortunate. They had uh, they had so much going on for this character. You know what they want to do? They're making a, a hybrid character. That's what they really want to do here. So uh, maybe it's not something I necessarily agree with. But she has 100% Bruiser. And she also has 80% Berserker. But that's still not enough. It's really not. It's nice that she has an increased chance of Extasements. And a wave that you then do 20% more damage to those afflicted enemies from the Soul Trait. And that in of itself is a pretty interesting and good Soul Trait, I would say. Maybe not. Alongside that too, you then also do an additional 20% more damage to those enemies afflicted with status which You can also buff to your entire team if you are a power attribute ranker. And I guess your strong attacks now have a tad bit more range. It's a weird one. It's not something I necessarily would agree with. I would have really preferred to had she just picked up Flurry. That would have been a lot better. She could have kept all these skills and just instead of giving Havoc, give her Flurry plus one. Needless to say though, it's definitely an interesting resurrection to say the least. They definitely wanted to make her a hybrid character, but you're going to need more than a 100% Bruise and 80% Berserker. Depending on how you look at it, this could be a bad resurrection. I'm kind of curious to see how it's going to play out though, I will say. Especially that Naturing. That Naturing is going to be absolutely insane with the 20% long reach. That then takes us into Kona, one of the best characters in the game on release, hoping for a good resurrection here. So, when it comes to the soul trait, they have a 12% strong attack recharge soul trait. Second soul trait here, ID would want to be full stamina damage, strong attack damage, or more strong attack damage at full stamina. Any of those three would be a good soul trait, in my opinion. I know mine does access to already quite a lot of recharge soul traits. Recharge and strong attack damage. But Ikone is a character that deserves a good soul trait because that would make the character better. So that's what I'm hoping for the soul trait. As for the skills, they are Bruiser, Dipper, Take the Devastation, Frenzy, Long Stride, Paralysis, Duration, and also Sprint to Plus 2. I think in this case, it's going to be more of a bone resurrection, just getting 20% Berserker and 20% Havoc. Let's check it out though. All right then, so first up, let's check out their innate ability Havoc plus 20%, and also 20% more strong attack damage when you are at full stamina. Exactly what I did expect to see with that Berserker. And unfortunately, damage to weakened enemies instead of havoc plus 20 percent never mind i'm an idiot they have they have 20 percent havoc here <laughs> so okay that's good that's good. They got more range. They got more damage at full stamina. Plus the 20% Berserker. So basically a 40% damage increase here. And 20% more damage to those weakened enemies. is actually pretty good. I Maybe I would have preferred a different skill than just damage to weakened enemies. But I don't think they could have given anything else. An SP boost would have been nice of course. Higher Berserker always would have been great too. No need for it to be still 20% in my opinion. But as far as resurrection standards do go. This is a good resurrection. This is a really good one. More damage. More range. An amazing soul trait. What more could you ask for? But with that said, lads, that was the video for today. Checking out the new resurrectable character, the Kone, Grimjan, and Elio. All three pretty interesting resurrections. I say Grimjan and Kone got the traditional good resurrection upgrades. It overall does make them better. Nelia was the weird one. They went down the hybrid route. Would have preferred if they doubled down on the normal attack damage output. Flurry plus one in that character would have been absolutely amazing. But I'm excited to try all three out when they do resurrect at the end of the month. It's about time Khan Fee World start getting resurrected. And does this now mean end of year is going to be a Khan Fee on World Banner? I mean, there's potential. It's now definitely up for debate. Let me know what you like to characters in the comments below. And I'll see you guys next time. Take care and peace.